Hey everybody, Corey Wakefield here, and I've got another video for you guys running through the navigation elements in the header and footer builders. So we're going to discuss some of the nuances between the different navigations and also how um, some of the same navigations can behave a little differently based on the context where you use it. So like a top bar versus a sidebar, for example. So the first thing we'll do is click into our inline nav here and we will just start from the top. So the one option you'll see in every navigation is this assign menu option. Um, now your menus themselves are managed in the WordPress menu system in that back end in the admin. And that's where you will set up all of your links, all of your content. Um, you can assign your secondary text through the, uh, the description text area box in there. Um, you can also set up your icons and images in there as well. So just keep that in mind when you're working with a, like a button or a toggle, you can actually edit content directly in the module. So like you could change your text right in the builder. If you're working with navigation, you've got to set up all your text and icons and content in the menu system and that gets assigned here. Now we have a few sample menus here that are used in our templates, but you can also use them yourself and they're great, especially if you have a brand new site or maybe you don't have any content yet, but you want to start designing. Um, and so maybe you have an idea um, of what you want to achieve with the navigation. So you can just assign this and play around with the design ideas you're thinking of. So we've already got, you know, some basic links set up here. Um, there's some icons assigned so you can play around with the graphic ideas you might have. Um, so it's just a quick start tool for you to use if you need it. Um, these are split because we use these for our standard middle template where the um, logo is in the middle and then you've got two navigations with three links each on either side. And so that's a great um, thing to play around with too if you want to just experiment with a shorter navigation or something like that. So that is why those are there. Now the next thing to discuss is um, most other navigations will have a base font size control. So you can specify you know, the, just the base size for that menu and then everything else will filter down. And then a margin control. So just overall positioning, if you need to you know, bump something out a little bit, you can do that. The only one that doesn't have that and really is, doesn't have anything else is the drop-down navigation. And that's because basically the menu um, shares with the first drop-down itself. So this is where you'll be you know, setting your base font size and adjusting any margin because that first drop down is the menu. Um, just something to keep in mind there. And then jumping back to the inline navigation. Um, so this is the only nav you have that has, one second here, all of these flex box options available to you. And that's done for a couple reasons. It keeps the other ones relatively just, you know, a little more streamlined when working with them. And if you need anything where you need some Flexbox magic, uh, the inline nav is basically the go-to choice for that. The first thing we have is our align self-control, um, which primarily you'll probably use for the stretch and center um, options. Notice that right now at stretch, when I hover over this navigation or into this bar, I'm immediately hovering over that link. And that's because they are stretched full height or full width, depending on the context they're in. Setting this to uh, center, you'll notice that now it's oriented vertically center, but it's not filling up all of the space. So um, some good examples to see for the center option would be like our icon or ethos presets, and the integrity and renew presets are really good full height examples. And you can just see how they differ and allow you to play around with some different design ideas based on what you're using. Um, and then next we have these three flex controls. Now I'm not gonna really go into detail on what they're doing because we have a video that describes all that. Um, so go check that out if you need some more info on Flexbox in general. Um, but we have our self flex. So we can tell the menu itself whether it should grow um, or fill a certain space or not shrink. Um, that not shrink is especially helpful. Um, for example, if you're using a content scrolling situation where you want the navigation to keep scrolling um, with the bar setting there. But so we'll set this to fill space equally. 
Um, and then you have control over the items themselves, how you want them to be laid out. So if you're in a top or bottom bar, by default, it will be a row. And if you're in a sidebar, by default, it will be a column. But just because you're um, set up like that initially doesn't mean you couldn't experiment with a column layout in a top level nav. This is obviously overflowing, but we could fix that and adjust it. Um, and vice versa, you could try a row layout over here. And we'll show some ideas of that in a second. Um, you can, of course, reverse your items. Um, you will need to tell it to wrap children if you want to use that in certain instances. I'll walk through that in a bit here. Um, and then you have your just general, you know, flex orientation stuff. So maybe we want space between, end, center, start. And then the one big difference here is notice that when it's set up like space between, um, right about here, I'm not on the link anymore. And that's because this link has a little bit of padding, but right beyond that, there's nothing. So there's truly this kind of dead space in between your links. Now that might be a look you're going for, but if you want these links um, to fill all available space equally, then you could set it to this setting here. And you'll notice that now when I hover in between, I'm always going from one link to the next. And what's really cool about this is if you go back to your menu later, and let's say you had to add a, a sixth menu item or take away one, so now you only have four, um, automatically your menu styling will fill all that space and look great. And this is one of the really cool things about Flexbox. It takes some of that um, manual adjustment stuff you might've had to do before um, out of the way. And then also those same options can work in our sidebar here. So we could set up our menu to fill space vertically and then fill space vertically with our items. And so now we're getting that no gap in between here. And there's a lot of really cool stuff you could do with this. For example, we might um, remove our drop downs. And let me I'm going to turn off my text, but turn on my graphic and then jump up to the bar. Let's make it like four ends. Yeah. So, I mean, this is a cool idea that you could experiment with. Again, these items are equally spaced, um, vertically spaced perfectly. And I mean, you could experiment with some appier type layouts, some real creative ideas. Um, it might suit your needs for a particular um, design or idea. So there's all sorts of options. And I even every day am discovering um, new stuff all the time to do and, and try out. So that's really cool. Let me get rid of that bar. And we will add a, um, I want to add a collapse nav here because this is the next important distinction. So if you add a, um, this is really the only one that does it, but if you add a collapse navigation to a top or bottom bar, that navigation itself will be placed inside an off canvas area. So you'll get the toggle and that toggle of course will trigger your off canvas area over here and then the navigation is inside that. And notice that's because, again, like I mentioned earlier, these navigations are all oriented vertically, so they're meant to work um, just top to bottom, whether it's a drop down or this or your modal. And so if you're in a sidebar, you've already got that orientation. And so basically this one's a little bit simpler to style because really all you have to concern yourself with are the links. And right away, everything's working out of the box. And you know, you could set this uh, bar up to have content scrolling on and you can still get to all of that content as you need to. So um, that's a really cool thing out of the box there. But then you have that same functionality here. It's basically just in that off canvas area. So just an important distinction there. Um, and then basically with your modal, again, you have your base font size and margin if you need to make adjustments here. And those are kind of the main differences with that. Now let me jump over to a footer really fast. Because I'd like to show you guys 
um, that flex wrap example. So if you have a navigation um, that's like this footer, oops, let me refresh really fast. Didn't quite want to load up there. Sometimes when I'm recording these, uh, the computer can't handle it all at once. So let me refresh and my nav should show up there. Perfect. Now in a situation like this, where we've got, again, a bar that is set to an auto height and it's got padding. So basically just as content wraps and gets taller, the bar should grow with it. Um, and I want my nav to wrap. We need to specify on the navigation that the children of that navigation should wrap. So we've got that turned on and that is what allows us to achieve this look. And then of course within that, we can play around with the uh, overall orientation of how those links might behave. So lots of fun stuff to do there. But the important distinction again is if you need a wrapping nav and you're using it in a situation like this, you'll need to turn on that wrap children option uh, to get that layout. Now that kind of makes me think of something back over here that I mentioned earlier. But just because by default, your navigation is like a, a row in a top or bottom bar or a column over here, doesn't mean you have to do that. So for example, um, I might take this navigation and let's assign, I'll do this split two because it's only got three links. Come in here, turn my uh, graphic on. Let me go back to the menu, make that a column. I will adjust the bar height here a little bit. Okay, so now we've got space. So you can play around with, again, the way your items are behaving um, in the navigation, you might want them to be laid out this way. So we might wanna do start, there we go. So we could line them up vertically and you could play around with that. You could just use an icon and this could, you know, this gets, gets me thinking about some ideas. You could do um, maybe all of your social links in a navigation and then remove the text and just put the social links in here. That's one way to organize it a little better. The one distinction is remember if you're working with a nav, any style you add gets added to every link. So if you need like individual colors, or something to be a little bit different, you would need to use buttons for that. Um, but this is certainly a look you could play around with. And if we got rid of our text, you can see we can start playing with some really cool ideas. And now similarly, we could come over here. Let's do our split two. We'll do our row layout. And let's um, I'm gonna turn my text off here as well. I'll turn my graphic on. There we go. So again, we can play with the orientation of our links, how they're positioned within that bar horizontally. Lots of cool stuff to play around with. So just keep these concepts in mind when you all are working um, with your bars. There's, there's a lot of different ways to achieve a lot of different looks. And the really cool thing is since everything is so granular, it's really open-ended and there's really no right or wrong way per se. It's just the way that kind of works best for you and what you are looking to achieve. So hopefully this kind of gives you guys a better idea of um, some of the, nav the navigation elements and how they behave and how they work across different contexts. And we look forward to bringing a few more videos to you guys very soon. Thanks.